Have you ever wondered how you would move without functioning joints? You would not. Joints are the pivotal element of the locomotor system. They allow you to bend your legs, stretch your arms, they allow you to move smoothly, to dance, whether you're human or a horse. Horses and people suffering from osteoarthritis cannot do this because they have one or more joints that are stiff and painful. And until today, there is nothing we can do to heal an osteoarthritic joint. Why is this so difficult? To understand this, you need to know what happens in a joint with osteoarthritis. But first, let's take a closer look at what the joint is and how it works. In our joints, two bone ends come together. The joint facilitates movement between these two bones. But that's not all. The joint is actually an entire organ that consists of various components. Let me introduce you to three more major components that are present in all joints of your arms and legs. The bone ends are protected by a thin layer of joint cartilage. When a force is placed upon the joint, the cartilage works as a shock absorber, reducing the forces and transmitting them to the underlying bone. The bone ends with their cartilage cover are packed with a joint capsule. The inside of the capsule is aligned with a thin membrane that has a dense network of nerve fibers and blood vessels. This membrane is the producer of the joint fluid. This is a viscous, slow-flowing fluid that lubricates the joint. Also, it is the communication medium that is in direct contact with all joint components and it provides the cartilage, which lacks blood vessels of its own, with nutrients. All these components need to work as a team. A healthy joint is in a beautiful, dynamic balance. However, a problem in any of the components can disrupt this delicate balance. And that is exactly what happens in osteoarthritis. How osteoarthritis starts exactly is still unclear, but a central event is the slow, progressive breakdown of the cartilage. This is a major problem as we know already for centuries that damaged cartilage will never heal. The membrane gets upset and starts producing inflammation factors that end up in the joint fluid. The volume of the fluid increases and the lubricant's quality declines. All of this affects the cartilage and induces further breakdown. The membrane reacts by getting even more upset. The underlying bone changes too. It becomes thicker but more brittle. When a lot of cartilage is gone, the two bone ends may even get in direct contact, which is very painful. This is the vicious cycle of osteoarthritis, where breakdown dominates over buildup. Where should we start treating the stiff and painful joint? Should we try to calm down the upset membrane? Should we restore the composition of the joint fluid? Should we try to repair the cartilage or should we treat the changes in the bone? Anyway, it seems easier to do something before the joint looks like this. Could we jump in earlier, we may be able to stop further progress of the disease. Therefore, I investigate how we could diagnose osteoarthritis in horses at an earlier stage. By looking at the cartilage with new techniques and by studying the different joint components in the presence of cartilage damage, I look for leads that could indicate what would be the best moment to start which treatment. With that, I hope to contribute to treatment of osteoarthritis in people as well. My ultimate goal? That both horses and humans can jump for joy happily ever after.